John McAfee, a pioneer in cybersecurity and antivirus software, says he can unlock the Apple iPhone and is offering his team services free of charge in a new Business Insider op-ed. Founder of McAfee Associates writes, I will, free of charge, decrypt the information on the San Bernardino phone with my team. We will primarily use social engineering, and it will take us three weeks. If you accept my offer, then you will not need to ask Apple to place a back door in its product, which will be the beginning of the end of America. The often controversial, always outspoken John McAfee joins us now with details of his offer. John, good to have you here. I want to get to your offer, but first I want to explore a little bit more of this idea that you're so concerned about what the government has asked Apple to do. You say it's worse than handing over the codes for our nuclear capability to the Chinese and the Russians. You say that it would be one of the dark, this is a black day and the beginning of the end of the U.S. as a world power. Really? I mean, you think it's that high a stake situation? Well, well listen, a, a back door to encryption is like a master key, only it's in software. You can make a million copies of it for free. There has never been a back door that has not been hacked into by bad hackers or foreign nations. So really what the government is asking Apple to do is to make every individual who uses an iPhone susceptible to hacking by bad people, foreign governments, uh, and anyone who wants. It's not just the FBI. Here's the problem. The FBI says, oh, well, we can keep it secret. That's utter nonsense, utter nonsense. There are no secrets. There are none. There's always a bad apple somewhere. And you know there won't be just one copy. There will be hundreds of copies. And the more copies there are, the more likelihood that the bad people will get it. Now, just imagine if hackers had access to every encrypted communication on the iPhone, we would be losing our money. We would be losing our Social Security information. Everything about us would be known by the wrong people. Sure, the FBI would know, but so would everybody else. The emotional and response is, we, a lot of people come back and I'm say, sorry. what if there is information on that phone that could prevent a future terrorist attack. Doesn't that offset the concerns? No, it doesn't. We're on the verge of a cyber war with China. China has already taken 21 million records from the Office of Personnel Management last year of every employee who ever worked for the U.S. government. No greater coup of espionage has ever happened in the history of the world. Th keep in mind, a cyber war is going to be many times more devastating than any nuclear war you can imagine. Our entire infrastructure will be shut down. Now, you weigh that against what the FBI is asking. And it's not that the FBI cannot get into the phone. I offered to get into it with my team. It is easy on one phone to do it without creating a back door. It is nonsense to ask a computer manufacturer, a, a telephone manufacturer, to give a back door, which we so, know. So, John, all I don't, the bad hackers. That, what I don't ahead. understand is, is you say that you can do this and do this for this one specific phone, and Apple's making the case that it would have to create a whole new operating system, which would be essentially be no. the back door. No. So why can't Apple just say that they're going to do what you're going to do and unlock this one phone? Because that's not what the FBI wants. The FBI wants a back door. That's the that's the way that they have asked to get into it. If they just asked, said, here, we'll give you the phone, you tell us what's in it, that, that's great. They did not do that. I am now forcing the hand. I'm saying, okay, you say you only want it for this one telephone, perfect. Give me the telephone. I'll tell you exactly what's in it. My team and I, any, any team of great hackers can do that. So, no, they have not taken me up on that. They want a back door. Back doors into encryption are the worst How do you know that what you that do would be safe? Because you say if Apple does whatever it does, then it could be replicated, somebody else could get a hold of it. Why couldn't the same be applied to whatever you're going to do to the phone? Because we're not putting a back door in. We're taking the telephone apart physically. We're going to be copying all of the digits onto some other device and working it that way. That can't be de replicated. Uh, it's got to be worked over and over again for each individual phone. It would take anybody three weeks to do one phone. That's not a problem. But to have a key that could access hundreds of millions of phones, that's a problem. It is a serious problem, and one that the FBI has simply ignored and our government has ignored. It's not a matter, I mean, whether or not it's right. 
that the FBI should be listening to all of our conversations is a, is a completely moot point. Do we want the Chinese, the Russians, and all the bad hackers to do it? Do we want the bad hackers to have access to our bank accounts, our credit cards, our social security John, numbers? I'm gonna, they John, will have that. I'm going to assume yes. th the phone is in government hands already, right? It's in uh, police evidence yes. somewhere. I'm assuming yes. then that the FBI must have probably tried to get into the phone prior to begging Apple for help. Of course. And obviously course. failed. What, what yes. can we read into U.S. government technological capability from this? We are 20 years behind the rest of the world. And here is why. All of the great hackers are not, not the type of people who want to wear suits, shine their shoes, and show up to work at 8 o'clock every day. Many of them are very asocial. Uh, they have their own style. They want to smoke weed while they work or whatever. This is not uh, conducive to being hired by the FBI. The FBI and our entire government has become a bureaucracy, sick, tired, and old as far as technology is concerned. This has to change. Do you think the Chinese think twice about hiring a hacker with a mohawk? Or a tattooed face? No. What do you think, John? What do you think? Sam, it just happened that this was an iPhone, so it's an Apple product. What if it was a Samsung phone? What if it was, a, you know, a Galaxy? Do you think the South Korean yeah. government would do this? Uh, of course not. Of course they would not put a back door in because that would be idiotic. And neither will Google, I hope, into their Android system. See, here is the, here is the fundamental problem. If Apple falls. So will Android and Google, and so will everyone. And we are then in a world of hurt. We will be defenseless as a nation in the up-and-coming cyber war. And as a people, we will lose everything to the hackers who go, oh, heavens, we don't have to do any work anymore. We've got the back door to go into. Think about this for a minute. Think about the implications of every man, woman, and child everything about your life being open to the bad people in the world. It's not the FBI, it's the bad people. Now, we can talk about the FBI if you wish. I personally don't want the FBI into my life. I think that privacy is an innate right, and not just that, society cannot exist without it. You don't realize that, that you exercise privacy a hundred times a day. When you check out something from the grocery store, you don't tell that person the intimate secrets of your life. You may tell your wife everything. You may tell your boss only those things which will ensure that you'll get a raise or a promotion. John? Privacy is necessary for the glue that keeps us together. You compare, in your op-ed, you compare hackers to the equivalent of students at Juilliard, that there's a brilliance that is somehow in their DNA. Can you embellish that? What do you mean well, by I, that? I didn't, I didn't compare them to the students at Juilliard. What I said was that Juilliard cannot create a Mozart or a Bach. This is an inherently genetic thing. There are mathematicians who are born with the capacity to multiply 2,000 digit numbers in their head instantly. It is a unique talent. There are hackers that have this talent that can look at a piece of code and disassemble it in their minds. These are the type of people I work with. I promise you, none of them are working for the US government. And, and they need to. We are behind. A cyber war is coming, and we are ill-prepared. I, I, Twenty years behind. I, I will. I appreciate those sentiments completely. I mean, I did a cybersecurity documentary a few years ago, and I fully, or I like to think that I understand uh, that the cyber war threat is very real and, and could, in fact, be imminent. But we are living in a world which saw, for instance, the impact of a Stuxnet. For instance, why is this? that much more detrimental in your view, which would cause the world as we know it, or whatever terminology you're using, to come to an end, when we've seen very destructive worms exist out there that did not bring the destruction that it could have? It's because we're talking about cell phones. We all have one. We carry them with us. And when they become compromised, they are watching us, listening to us, and people within government carry them. People within industry carry them. Top secret people carry them. It is universal, and it affects every aspect so, of our society. 
So it's not just my privacy, my health records, my information, my contacts. It's, it's the intellectual property that could be stolen. It's the state secrets that somebody might be carrying uh, when they use their yes. iPhone at the, at the government. I mean, it's, it's much yes. bigger than just thinking about it's, it's your address everything. book much, or your it's, buying it's, patterns are going to be hacked. It's, Stuxnet is, is kindergarten stuff. This is the real world with bad things happening when we start messing with our phones. I mean, they're already spying on us because we're downloading applications without looking at the permissions that we give them. We have to get real here. We cannot do this. We cannot allow forced back doors into software. It will be the end of us, I assure you. What, what is your team seeing when it comes to the international cyber war that maybe isn't apparent to people on the ground right now, but feels like, based on the reports that we've read, is fully underway. What is actually happening, from your view? Well, there is no full underway. I think the Chinese and the Russians are, are playing with us, getting information. I guarantee you they have a button they can push anytime they wish, which will shut down our power grids, which in turn will shut down our food production, our communications, our emergency services. There were studies that were done and presented to Congress last year that said 90% of Americans will perish in an all-out cyber war with Russia or China. We're looking at something massively serious here. I, I, I blanched when you said thing. all this. I turned white and, and I looked at Melissa and Melissa nodded her head up and down. And yes. said, yeah, it's all true. Everything. Because worms can cause it physical destruction that we, I mean, for instance, the Stuxnet, it was a controller. It was a Siemens controller that caused physical destruction to the centrifuges. Yes, absolutely. Oh, okay, fair. Absolutely. Now that we're now, all terrified. Now, as you, as you, John, as, can I ask as you, you this? Know, is I'm privacy running... an illusion in this day and age? Uh, I've been arguing this I the whole not. week. Be... You know, I buy a phone. They track everywhere I go, everything I do anyway. Why do I care? Well, you should care. I mean, I you do. I'm care. being facetious. Let me ask you I think something. You get my, is there, you, is there you get nothing in just... your life? If, if, for example, I could say, I know everything you've ever done, and I published it in the New York Times, would you be comfortable with that? No. Nope. I don't think anybody would. Okay. Who would? None of us would. It's not that we have no, nothing to hide. No, but I mean, I guess hide. what I'm saying is, are we kind of self-publishing already? I mean, we all know that using Twitter yes. and Facebook and walking around yes. the phone with GPS we, enablement, and we're all kind of self-publishing all the time anyway. But we still choose what we publish. We don't choose to publish our darkest secrets, and we all have them. All of us. Now, you know that I'm running for the president under the Libertarian Party banner. My prime, my prime concern in becoming president is to change this cyber uh, illiteracy within our government to bring it into the modern age. We have to. The next war is not going to be fought with bombs and missiles and tanks. No, it's going to be fought with cyber science and so, cyber warfare. So on that note, John, when the White House says, when they were asked about Apple's opposition to the order, they said the DOJ is not asking Apple to create a new backdoor. They're just asking Apple for access to one device. Wrong. Absolutely that's wrong. To the White House. Look at, look at, Tim, look at White Tim House. Cook's. Uh, but that's the White House. Look at Tim Cook's comment because he was the one that the FBI asked to do the thing. He said, what they've asked me to do is the equivalent of a backdoor. Now, is Tim Cook lying? I do not think so. I respect this man. Everybody in industry respects this man. We as Americans have to stand behind Tim Cook and Apple, else we are going to be in a world of hurt. We are. But you're saying the White House is wrong when they say this. Yes, they are absolutely wrong. They are just couching their words in ways that they can make it look like it's not a backdoor, but it is. So when, back to Brian's point about the issue of privacy, all these kids... Me too. We all do it. We post on Facebook like crazy. We post on Snapchat and Instagram and Twitter, etc. What do you think about that? Is that good or bad? Is that right? I mean, if you're worried about people being able to see stuff, I mean, there it all is. Are they crazy? Are they just crazy narcissists? What? Well, no, here's the point. Uh, uh, I read a statistic from the Pew Research where 65% of millennials now get all of their news from Facebook. Well, good luck, because if you're on Facebook, you know that half of the news stories there are from satire sites. They're unreal. So, so if the Chinese want to gauge what's happening with an American uh, civilization by reading the news on Facebook, well, good luck to them. Um, but we still have to take care. On Facebook, you don't see people publishing their dark secrets. You see people saying, this is what I had for dinner, with photographs. 
Um, and, and clearly, those with any sense can recognize um, a satire news piece from one yeah, which but is I even, real. I, even, I guess I was. Refer I even mean that's we self-publish. I get that. So that's if I write on Twitter like I'll do now, like I get it. I'm talking about when the fact that we go anywhere, right. we're driving in our right. car. And we get an ad for something nearby. I mean, they know where well, we are. Well, you should turn off location they, services, they, they, number they, they, one. No, but they, the gov John, you know this, cars today, right? They know how fast you're yes. driving, right? Easy yes, Pass know. knows where you go. I, I I'm just trying to play devil's advocate and suggest I that, agree. man, we have, I agree. we have surrendered almost all of our, unless you go live like Ted Kaczynski in a, in a, in a, in a so, booth or a little box in the middle of Montana right. and go off the grid, People are going to know where you're going and what you're doing. So to that point, I'm not right. agreeing so, with the so, position. So, I'm just trying to right. play devil's advocate. So, but to right. that point, but, but I, see, this, this is why this is why we need encryption. This is the sole reason. So, so that for those things that are critical and that we must keep private, whether it's a business deal we're about to close, whether it's some erotic conversation I want to have with my wife, so John, whether it's something I want to tell my son. The, that, those, those things, things the, must but be But these kept things private. are not the end of the world as we know it. I mean, were you speaking in and just were you just exaggerating to make a point here? I mean, no, I was I was not exaggerating because listen, once you have access to the phone, you have access to the microphone, you have access to the camera. You can watch what you're doing, even though you don't know you're being watched. You can listen to everything that you say, even while you're not on the phone. No, I'm not exaggerating. There, we're talking about social media and what people publish. But when your phone becomes compromised, bad things happen. You're going to start losing things. The bad hackers are going to go, oh, you've got a lot of money in your bank account. I'm going to empty it. Mm. Or, oh, you've got a nice credit card. I think I'll use it to buy a refrigerator or a new car, right. depending on your credit limit. So, no, this is what I'm talking about. Don but we still have to have encryption because, imagine, if we had no encryption and the government was talking to one of its agents overseas on a sensitive topic, if it were not encrypted, then why bother talking about it because you're having that agent executed? We have to have it. And we can't have back doors because if we do, everybody will get into them that way. John, great. Thanks so much for joining us. You have outlined just how high the stakes uh, before are I leave, in before this. I leave, before, I leave, before I leave, go to McAfee2016.com. We need your help. If you believe in anything that I've said today, if you're behind me, go to McAfee2016.com, volunteer, donate, help out. Thank On you. the Libertarian ticket. Thank you, Mr. McAfee. We appreciate it. All right.